Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. In this video, we're going to continue on the theme of last week's video about uh, certificate authentication. Last time we did it with Azure API management, but what if you want to do it straight into your Azure web app or even your web app running in IIS? I'm going to show you kind of how to run it locally and have that code ready. As always, with most certificate based authentication uh, documentation with Microsoft, it's not great and actually doesn't work if you're using private uh, certificates or the computer doesn't trust the certificate you're using, uh, which in Azure Web Apps, it doesn't because you don't own that computer. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you the code. Also, the code is gonna be in the, in the GitHub with a commit that I'm gonna link down below. And I'm also gonna link down below this video because in that one, I go into many details on how to issue the certificate, like how to deal with first time issuance and so on. In this one, I'm just gonna focus on the certificate-based authentication for your users or whatever, whoever is uh, using the API. Let's get started. So in here, I just have a regular web, web application and it's pretty straightforward. This is literally just like the weather controller. I just added the authorize uh, here and I added here how to get the certificate. You're gonna use a certificate to get like the username or something from the subject name and do any extra validations you wanna do. And then you can do whatever uh, you have to do in the application. In this case, we just return the weather forecast. Um, another thing we have to do is add a web config to request, so the server knows to request the SSL certificates. If you do this in the Azure Web Apps, it's just enable uh, mutual TLS and it will do the SSL negotiation, but to test it locally, you have to add this. Once again, just copy and paste it from uh, our GitHub. And then last, we have our authentication code that we add here. Um, and in here, you can do extra validations on the certificate, make sure that it's coming from a trusted, like one of the CAs with a thumbprint or something like that. In this case, I just made it, it automatically and in, in here I just commented out, but you, you can add kind of like stuff. That's why I left some, some thing here. Um, and then I'm just going to go kind of like through the code, what it does and so on. So in here, we're just forwarding, uh, the headers. And this is kind of like the part of the code from Microsoft that actually works. Um, this as well. And then in here, we're actually just adding the uh, issuing CA and the root CA. But this is just so we can add it to our trust, trusted root store and make sure that the computer trusts them. So in here you would add as many as you have. In this case, I just have a root CA and an issuing CA. And in here, we're just adding the certificate based authentication, valid validity period. So make sure that it's not expired. And then in here, we're adding it to the custom uh, trust store as well as uh, additional chain. This one is not really re uh, required, but we still add it. So you have to do the, add each of the issuing certificates into the custom trust store. And then uh, the main one that is, this is what it's missing from the documentation is you have to add the trust mode to be custom trust, uh, custom root trust. Another thing that is not explicit in documentation is adding that the revocation mode is online. So it actually checks for the krill to make sure that your certificate is not uh, expired. And then check the entire chain. So make sure that like your cer uh, certificate authority is not expired and so on. So those two things are usually best practices to do. And other than that, you're good to build and run. So then we're going to run it and I'm going to show you how to test it in Postman. So in Postman, um, you basically go to settings. And in settings, you go to certificates and in here you add where your PFX certificate is that you want to do the client authentication with and for which host. So in here, I already added it for local host in that port, which is where this application is running. So it'll all automatically do the SSL negotiation and it'll do it. So in here, I'm just going to call the weather forecast. And we're going to see here the breakpoint. It stopped where it is. And we can see the certificate so we can see the issuer and so on. So you would use this to know what user it is uh, with like, for example, the subject name, and then you would return whatever you want. So this is how you do certificate based authentication 
for a web app in .NET. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.